Hello students. Welcome to the course Deep Learning. This is Shaja Khan Abubakar from Department of CSEA ML, KAT's College of Engineering, Kolhapur. In the last class, we have discussed about how a input feature vector look like, how, what is the notation we use and all that. Then we have discussed different types of activation function. Okay. So in this lesson, we are going to study another set of function which is called loss functions. So what is loss function? We have, these are the outline of this lesson. What is a loss function? Where it be used? What is the difference between a loss function and a cost function and different types of loss functions? So we'll have a small recap. This is a neural network we have discussed in the first lesson. Neural network is a connection of a small set of unit called a neuron. Here you can see a small example of a single neuron. We will be passing the input features x1, x2, etc, xn, which will be multiplied with the weight w1, w2, etc, wn and will be added up. We can add a bias also, which is a DC value, which we see in the lab we have so seen in the last class which will be passed to the activation function which introduce the non-linearity as we discussed in the last class and we will get the output. So the output y is equal to f of b plus summation i x i w i where y is the output, f is the non-linearity which is the activation function, b is the bias, x i is the input features and w i are the weights. So this is just a, a revision of that. Now we'll go to loss function. What is a loss function? See, when we pass an input feature x, we expect an output y. The model will supply the weight w such that we should expect the output y. But we get an output y cap, which is a prediction, which may not be exactly same as y. So it is quantifying how unhappy we are with the prediction y cap when the expected output is y. So the purpose of the loss function is to uh, for the machine to learn. The training will happen based on this loss function. So we have to, this is an object which we want to minimize. We want to minimize the loss function so that the prediction will be closer enough to the real output. So you can see here, this is an example which we see in a regression problem. So suppose we have five samples, uh, which is the weight of some unit. So based on the weight, we have some price. So x axis is the weight and y axis is the price. But when we selected a weight such that the slope is that red line in the first image, you can see this image, uh, this figure, the x axis is nothing but uh, the weight and y axis is the price. So we have uh, fit a curve which is this red line which is uh, the weight of the model. But you can see the blue line which is the actual output and the red line there is a small difference correct. Similarly here also there is a difference. Similarly this point also there is a difference right? that you can see here. There's, so the actual output is different from the prediction. So this is called loss. So we want to try to minimize this loss. We use some kind of optimization algorithm to minimize this loss. We can see in this graph, the slope we will change based on some optimization function. Finally, the slope becomes red where you have very less loss. Okay. So uh, the help, with the help of some optimization algorithm, we try to uh, reduce the loss. So where it will be used? So this loss function is mainly used when designing and developing intelligent system or nothing but machine learning or deep learning algorithm. There are some examples we can see ANN, CNN is convolutional neural network, recurrent neural network and other supervised and semi-supervised algorithm etc. Here we can see the loss function. So loss function versus cost function. You might have heard about this sometimes cost function, sometimes loss function. This looked like synonyms, but it's not exactly the synonym. When we have only one training example, we call 
it as a loss function. If we have multiple training example, then we use the term cost function. So normally the machines or the deep learning model will try to minimize or maximize the cost function because at a time we'll be supplying not a single example, multiple examples we are passing. So different types of loss function. There are a lot of uh, different loss functions available. So majorly it can be classified into two types, regression losses and classification losses. In this lesson, we will only uh, talk about regression losses. So what is regression loss? When we try to predict a value which is continuous in red, uh, nature, like uh, we have predicted the price of the house from the size and uh, number of bedrooms, these feature, input features, we try to predict the price of the house. How the price of the house look like? It's not a 1 or 0, it will be a value like 15,000, 23,000 etc. So if the output is a continuous value, then we will try to use a loss function which is called a regression loss. When the output is a classes like a binary class like whether it's a cat or not, 1 or 0 or it's a different types of animal, if it's a cat or a dog or a horse or a lion, something like that. So that is a categorical, different types of categorical values multi-class problem. In that case, we use classification losses. For example, uh, if you have handwritten numbers from 0 to 9, we'll write, right? 0, 1, 2, 3. It'll be converted to one of the numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, like 10 numbers from 0 to 9. In such cases, we use classification losses. So, there is a question for you. What would be the maximum value of output prediction y cap in case of softmax activation the last class we have discussed about softmax activation is a multi class problem what will be the maximum value any idea yes it is a probability value even if it is a 4 or 5 or any number of classes the maximum value of probability is 1 so the 1 will be divided among the different classes some class will have 0 0.01 probability, some has 0.3, some has 0.5. So maximum, what is the probability value? We can have 1. Okay. Now there are many different regression losses available, but we will be discussing only two types. The first one is mean squared error, which is also called as quadratic loss or L2 loss. Another one is mean absolute error or L1 loss. There are other losses few are mentioning here mean bias error, Huber loss, epsilon hinge loss, squared epsilon hinge loss, etc. And many more. So, first we will discuss about mean squared error. So, what is MSE or mean squared error, which is also known as quadratic loss or L2 loss? It is nothing but it is an average of squared difference between the prediction and the actual observation. We can see here y is the actual value output value y cap is the predicted output value we will find the difference then we will do a square that will be average for all the samples that's that is how we will get the mean squared error okay so since there is a square term the direction is not important even if y cap is greater than yi or yi is greater than of y cap still doesn't have any difference because there is a square term so direction is not important in MSE. So it is easier to calculate the gradient for MSE. Okay. So what are the different advantage and disadvantage of uh, MSE? Suppose we have a out clear prediction. One output is predicted is very different value. So what is the square of that number? It's a huge number, right? So it will try to penalize that bigger number. So that will try to reduce that error. So this is the advantage. So outlier prediction won't happen because that will lead to a large loss function. So large loss value, the model will try to minimize. So the output prediction may not be having a large prediction. That's an advantage. But there is the same kind of disadvantage. When our output actual value is very far away, like outlier prediction, outlier uh, class output, then that case, our prediction has to be very big number or there will be a large difference between prediction and the actual value. So it will give a more weightage for that term compared to the other terms. Suppose you have different values, all the predictions are closer to the actual value. Only one value which is predicted 
differently from the actual value because the actual value is very far. So that will contribute a large error even though all the values are same only except one value still the loss is coming high. So when there is an outlier class or a sample that time our model will perform very badly because of the square term. Next one is mean absolute error. Here there is no squaring term what we have the prediction and the actual that difference will be calculated and absolute value will be find out then we'll take average among the different samples so here the advantage again this is also not depend on the direction because y cap is greater than yi or yi is greater than y cap will make no difference because we are taking the modulus the advantage of mean absolute error compared to msc is there is no square term here so when there is no square term here if there is a large uh, uh, difference between one sample that will not contribute a big close function because there is no square term so what is the disadvantage of msc it will be covered in mi mean absolute error but the same disadvantage is there what is the advantage in the msc is a disadvantage here because if there is a prediction which is very far from the actual value which is called outlier prediction there is since there is no square term here that will not have a higher penalization so that will spoil our entire output so that is the disadvantage so in this class we have discussed about different uh, uh, losses among the regression problem in the next class we will discuss about the loss function in the uh, classification thank you See you in the next class.